Welcome, everyone, to uh, Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy gomez Shem And Duke gomez Shemp. You're listening to 88.1 FM KPPPLP Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. And tonight, I am going to be talking to you about the agents of chaos. Mm. I believe that they cause chaos uh, wherever they go and wherever they have been in the past. Yeah. I think it would be good for us to summarize the whereabouts, the history of one of those very important agents of chaos, Evan Kirk Duke the third, because as I realized that um, a lot of people that are followers currently started watching my reporting with regard to the caravans and my knowledge with regard to the uh, mercenary activists, con artivists, and uh, Antifa, um, Characters. Characters, yeah. yeah. I don't know what to call them. Uh, criminals? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that showed up in Mexico. I um, I realized that, you know, a lot of folks, they don't know the history of Evan Duke, which is tr- it's really shocking to me to see Evan Duke, you know, a yeah. fisticuffing in Portland, Oregon <clears throat> recently. This guy has uh, been on the government uh, watch list, on this government watch list that has been reported upon. He was drawn down on by a number of law enforcement Mm -hmm. with pointed weapons at the border. He had his phone seized. He was chained to a bench, as he put it. Um, there, There is so much that this man has been connected to so many people, politicians, important important people, politicians, campaign leaders in different parties. And it makes you wonder, how is this guy walking around free? Yep, exactly. How are these people who have, in my opinion, been part of... Uh, Fraud after fraud after crime after fraud after crime after fraud. Mm -hmm. And yet, they're walking around free. They're walking around free. Well, here on a Mexican Crossing Lines, we believe in media justice. Oh, yeah. I know that the world is lacking in it. We learned how poorly the justice system operates in the case of Kathleen Bennett. And we were able to bring justice to that situation by exposing the truth to the public, by bringing you out there the information. Was it instant? No. It took over a year to get rid of some of the, to, to lower the profile, the reach, the uh, criming, the involvement of some of these individuals such as Ed Higgins, many of you probably mm, oh don't yeah. remember who don't know who that is because you don't, uh, you haven't been following our show for for very many years. But his ugly face popped up again when I was doing the summary of Ed, Ed, Evan Duke. Oh, I suppose, I suppose. Yeah, he's in there. He's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought, you know what? I have to bring my audience with me so you can understand who this guy is. So we're going to talk about all of his uh, involvement, including. Tulsi Gabbard, presidential candidate 2020. And of course, uh, the one of the co-founders of the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock, Wes Clark Jr., uh, Jill Stein, and the redacted Tonight host, Lee Camp. Oh, really? Remember that uh, the different shows that 
are connected to the Young Turks, mm -hmm. including that comedian uh, dude. Jimmy Dore. Jimmy yeah. Dore, mm -hmm. yeah. And redacted tonight's Lee Camp. They were like this tight little circle of media people reproducing the... That's news. The echo chamber of lies and propaganda mm -hmm. that was produced by these con artivists and mercenary activists that came out to Standing Rock. Uh, which was quite infuriating for us uh, trying to crack this Kathleen Bennett case, but we managed to do it despite their best efforts. So we're going to talk about all of that tonight. <clears throat> it's going to be quite an education for folks. So <clears throat> get ready. Buckle your seatbelts because this is going to be a doozy. <clears throat> Excuse me. But first, I want to thank folks for reaching out and sending all of the information that you have. People are still very upset of, of uh, what took place in Portland and the impunity under which it happened. Um, we do still plan to get out to Tijuana. We have not yet met our goal. So for those of you who are supporting our work, please uh, make a tax deductible donation to our nonprofit radio station. Duke, how can <clears throat> folks support us? <clears throat> well, many ways, and thank you all for supporting us and watching us. <clears throat> One of the biggest supports we get is that we have people who watch our live streams, who respond, who share them, and uh, also go to our YouTube channel, Duke1517, and watch the videos there. And also go to our website, kppfm.com. Um, <clears throat> we take a lot of these shows and we broadcast them on the air in our local community, on our radio station, our authentic radio station, which we really have. We've been, uh, we've been uh, broadcasting for over three years. It took three years to establish it, but um, <clears throat> if people are... <clears throat> excuse me, I swallowed a sandwich in my lungs before the show. <laughs> so I can't <clears throat> I'm trying them. to get it out of there. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyways... Um, you know, you, you can go uh, you can go to our, our website and look us up. Uh, it's, uh, we are at kppfm.com. Also, if you're driving around the community or if you just want to give us a call and leave a voice message for us, you can call our number at 701-566-0917. You can find us on Facebook at 88.1 FM. You can also uh, find uh, the People's Press Project, the Mexi-Can. And as uh, Cindy mentioned, our website where you can make a donation is kppfm.com slash donate. If you make a non a tax deductible donation to our station, we'd very much appreciate it. We appreciate everyone who has supported us over the years because it's viewers and listeners like you that have made this station possible. You've helped us improve the quality of the shows we do, the equipment we have, and uh, we are doing a bang up job. And also, you can find our other shows on kppfm.com slash uh, Mexican Crossing Lines. That's where Cindy's shows are on, you know, that I co host with. And also, um, don't forget to our, go to our YouTube channel because we put our um, all of it's up to date right now. If you go there, all our recent shows are up to date, and they have embedded uh, YouTube uh, videos along along with podcasts. Some don't have podcasts because, tell you the truth, these Antifa shows have been hard to edit to put on the air because I don't want any swear words going out there, or any cussing going out on the air, and some of these shows are over they two hours like long. Sailors. And I have hmm? they swear like sailors. Yeah, they swear all the time. You know, these Antifa people just have bleep, 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 and pretty much the whole the whole audio would be bleep, 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 bleep. You know, and it just uh, kind of gets tedious. So I haven't actually put those on the air or on our websites, but uh, most of them are there. Please go there and look around. And also, I thought of this, and I'm trying to remember what it was. A lot of the things we've done in the past on our website, the whole Kathleen Bennett case is on a tab called the Kathleen Bennett Story. Mm -hmm. All of our work at Standing Rock is the early uh, coverage of Standing Rock. We have other tabs on our website that you can actually look at some of the history of the things we did. Mm -hmm. And when we first started, we weren't doing YouTube Lives. They actually weren't very popular. Then they actually were just developing the technology. So they're audio podcasts. So you listen to our shows. And those shows, sure. when we first started, we were putting them on the internet radio until we actually got the equipment to put our station up and actually do terrestrial radio. So a lot of information is in there, and there are some early day live streams we did and some videos, videos from Standing Rock, plus the whole Kathleen Bennett story, which is close to 150 different shows to catch you up to date what that actually means. Cindy mentions it in every show because we relate to it. These characters emerged then. I didn't want to be, keep on covering Evan K. Duke the third. 
But he came up in Standing Rock a long, long time ago, and we covered them then, and we're covering them now. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, one of our listeners mentions that I forgot yeah. about uh, Mike Fassig. Uh, oh. No, Derek, I did not forget about Mike Fassig. For those who don't know, he was uh, accused of uh, being a, was it a guy that sells women? Is oh, it called? Uh, pimp. Yeah. That, that's the word. I didn't <coughs> want to say it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and his son was convicted for kidnapping and violently raping a woman. Um, I also did not mention Red Wolf Pope, who is also facing convictions on in multiple states for raping women. Um, of course, Ed Higgins, drunk driving, harassing women, committing fraud in Puerto Rico, uh, damaging property, Kyle Thompson, meth. Uh, mm -hmm. addiction, a meth addicted, um, abuser of Courtney doctor. We've got Frank Archambel, who is a registered sex offender, but you know, you know, all of these names, those people have that have been watching me, you know, all of these names and these stories, what you don't know. And here's a story I've never told before. I've never told the story, Duke. All right. I never told the story at the time because I learned along the way, folks, you have to understand that when I went to Standing Rock as a reporter, I was completely, uh, I believed their propaganda. I believed that they were there to help the Native Americans protect their water. I believed that they were going to be prayerful and peaceful. I uh, believed that they did not have dangerous people there, that they wouldn't work with dangerous people, that they did have their own internal security, the accusations they made against the police. I believed it all. And I believed that their, the accusations that most of the people there were frauds and that they were paid activists sounded insane to me. Mm -hmm. It sounded cuckoo, like a conspiracy theory from the right. But it was correct. It, it, it was a movie set. It was propaganda. And it took for me to see it over time. I had people working with the PR of Hollywood that, uh, for lack of a better word, exploited me for a very long time. One of those people, her name it was Maggie Day, for those of you who remember. She was on the shows all the time commenting. She actually is a PR person from Hollywood, which she admitted to me. She told me she was there with several of the actors, Kendrick Sampson being one of them, uh, Matt McGorry from mm -hmm. Orange is the New Black's first season. You might remember for several season he was in um, and, and some others. Uh, what was the Carter? One of the twins, one of the Carter twins, Max Carver, Carver, Carver. Yes, uh, there were several. What she failed to mention was that she was hired by Wes Clark Jr. And that she was working with Seven McDonald, um, the daughter of celebrity singer Country Joe and the Fish. What yeah. was the song they, they do? Um, <clears throat> Country Joe and the Fish, cheer. And it's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven, open up to pearly gates. Well, there ain't no time to wonder why. Whoopee, we're all going to die. That's exactly the one, honey. Mm -hmm. They did not tell me that. And I did not discover it on my own until Maggie told me that she was friends with Seven McDonald. She did not tell me they were both hired to work with Wes, they obviously knew a lot about Wes. I just assumed that because they both lived in LA, they'd heard about each other. And because they work within the inner sanctum of the public relations in Hollywood, they knew more about what was happening in the background of his life. Uh, when in fact, they were friends with him. They planned going out to Standing Rock with him. Uh, they were working very closely with political campaigns and senators and politicians, etc. But they never told me that. They never told me that they only got close enough that they were getting close 
to me that they were having Maggie Day call me on an almost constant basis so that she could direct how I was reporting so that she could intrude, so that she could threaten, so that she could cajole. And she did. In fact, and this is one of the many stories I never told. In fact, some of you may recall that when Mike Fassig and Mike, Mike Marcus burned down a building which was the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock headquarters, burned down that building um, that I said that both of these men were dangerous and that Mike Fassig struck me as being a con, that he reminded me of a guy that said he was in witness protection and had all these tall tales oh, yeah. from our town, um, that... I did not think that he was a hero. I, th I said, who would put lives in danger by starting a fire in the middle of a, an encampment ready to be besieged by the police at any moment, you know, basically giving um, police or local authorities uh, every reason to come in and mm -hmm. raid the camp. And I was attacked uh, right away. I was contacted by uh, Maggie Day and told that I had to take that video down. I did not know this at the time either, but I later learned uh, that she contacted Kathleen Bennett's son, Russell, and had him call me and tell me that he was angry on behalf of himself and his mother for what I had done in calling out this water protector, I'm using air quotes there, um, because he had such a great following, because he was such an important figure, because he was one of the heroes of the movement, mm -hmm. one of the sacred cows, that I was going to lose credibility with all the water protectors and with all the important people within the movement that would even care to help, as if any of them did, as if any of them ever did. OK, didn't make any difference. Uh, but between the call I got from Russell and the nagging of Maggie Day, they convinced me that the best thing to do for the for the case, for Kathleen Bennett's case, was to take down the video and to apologize, to apologize for something, to lie, basically tell, tell my audience that I was wrong when I did not feel like I was wrong. All to keep Kathleen Bennett's fan base listening mm -hmm. all to keep water protectors listening all to keep them on my side fat lot of good that did basically I removed a video I shouldn't have removed although I do still have the audio yep I still I always I kept the audio of that yep. show in a secret place in a secret place I still have the whole thing but that's why I did it folks that's why I took it down that's why I ultimately, I was coerced uh, and manipulated into removing media. And all they did was to keep these scammers' names from being destroyed, from be their brand from being burned. It wasn't long before Mike Fassig was a quote-unquote correspondent for Madeline Kelly Merritt, the Hollywood actress uh, and L.A. Divest uh, co-founder platform, Activate Now, the now defunct, for a long time defunct media platform, along with Ed Higgins, another one of those people that eventually burned their brand, but not until after they had committed so many horrible fraud, crimes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, harassment <clears throat> that finally, finally led to all of these water protectors, all of these con artivists dropping them. Yep. So when you see, folks, when you see blind followers 
of any of these sacred cows, any of these celebrity people. I challenge you to think of them as a package deal, the follower, the Kool-Aid drinking followers and the sacred cows. They're a package deal. They come with followers. They come with bots. Some of them are real. Some of them are sock puppet accounts. Mm -hmm. So it appears that they have a ton of support when it's just a bunch of con artists supporting each other, having each other's back no matter what, sticking by the side of these are, uh, activists, con artists, no matter what they do or who they do it to. Let's go back to the Portland riot. Let's look at this New York Post article together in which they talk about the cost the cost of this rally. It's going to cost millions, according to this New York Post article titled Proud Boys Leader Admits Rallies All About Brawling, Costing Millions. Proud Boy rallies are all about brawling with Antifa, anti-fascists, and wasting the public's money. The end. I don't need to read any more. The group's leader is caught on video admitting this. I've been saying this. I had other people on my comments that used to be one of these folks also saying this. People are starting to wake up and learn their lesson. S Proud Boy leader Enrique Tario was taped saying, we've wasted all their effing resources to make this rally. We want them to waste two million. Do you remember me telling you that in the process of making millions off of their GoFraud me's at Standing Rock, getting a bunch of people arrested, nearly 900 people got arrested and all had cr records and were all banned from going to any kind of protest for a year or longer. Mm -hmm. In addition to all of that, they cost the state millions and millions and millions of dollars. The pipeline was built on time. The pipeline didn't suffer at all. No. Nope. Protesters, First Amendment rights, the rights of flying drones, especially for a state like the one which kind of pioneered a lot of drone stuff, mm -hmm. which is North Dakota. Um, all of those things were curtailed because of these activists who claimed that they came here to fight for the rights of people. What did they do instead? They cost a lot of money. That's what these folks are about. It's about the spectacle. Mm -hmm. And who better than to get people that don't care about the outcomes, have criminal records themselves, have nothing to lose. Have nothing to lose. People that go from place to place that never have a permanent home, many of them living out of their cars, living out of... <clears throat> their trailers out of their vans saying that they are homeless, mm -hmm. that they gave up everything for the cause. Evan is one of those people here. He is in Portland. You recall he's got that <coughs> scarf that, uh, right. what is it called? Kefir, Kefi, Kefi. I'm not sure what it's called. Kefi scarf, which is, you know, those, uh, scarves worn by the, um, uh, is it, Fighters in Afghanistan? Uh, something those? like that, yeah. Anyway, he's it's a green and black cafe scarf. He always is wearing that thing. He was even punching people in the videos that you saw. There he is next to Jamal Oscar X. For those of you who don't know who these two people are, they were prominently featured in many of the videos that came out of that riot that happened in Portland. And... um. In this next article, I wanted to talk about the shirt he was wearing. If you can go back to Evan's uh, picture just for a minute, you can see he's wearing an American Indian Movement shirt. You see that? Mm -hmm. The American Indian Movement? <coughs> well, it's folks like 
this guy from the next article I'm going to show you uh, that wear those types of shirts. And this man, his name is <clears throat> Pedro Ragabo Gutierrez. I've shown this man on my show before oh, yeah. to give you an idea of the kind of people involved in their pipeline protest movements. Pete Heflin was a leader of a Texas environmental movement. He fought against pipeline companies, dec dec decried corporate greed, and he once helped to open one of the largest protest camps in West Texas aimed at blocking the Trans-Pecos pipeline. But guess what? He forgot to tell people he was a convicted felon from California. Not for just any little old thing, but for multiple serious crimes, including rape, drug dealing. Before fleeing the state, at least 10, 10 uh, years ago, as a wanted man, and then he uh, went to... Um, protest. He became a, a professional protester. protester yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, who was he working with? Well, it says here in this article, if you scroll down, uh, that he, he was part of the circle of the Society of Native Nations. You know that group that was with Lilith Sinclair protesting the laws that were going to go into effect in Texas against protesting pipelines? Mm-hmm. Maybe this is why Texas passed those laws. It says right here, Frankie Arona, the guy with the feathers in his hair all the time at these protests that stick straight up, you know, kind of porcupine style. Mm -hmm. The guy that always wears the AIM vest. The guy that's always hanging out with Juan B. Mancias of the Carrizo Come Crudo tribe. What did he have to say when he found out that Gutierrez was a convicted felon a dangerous one at that he said quote he was part of our circle he was part of our family that's what he said and Orono is of course the executive director of the society of native nations the san antonio based environment and at american indian advocacy group at which gutierrez was a member of the board of directors wow wow and then he says, goes on to say, but then again, we've always been about holding people. No, you never have. You've never held anyone accountable. You hide their criminal pasts. You literally call these people. You have no problem working with them. Even when you find out, let me prove it. And in this situation, he was definitely wrong. I am upset with him. Why aren't you upset with yourselves? Mm -hmm. Who else was working along with these folks? The Sierra Club. The Sierra Club. Did they have a problem going down to Texas with Evan Duke in his new camp <coughs> with the Carrizo Come Crudo tribe and uh -huh. Juan Mancias? Hell to the no. No problem. Gutierrez, <clears throat> according to this article, and the California Department of Corrections was convicted was sentenced to nine years for forcible rape seven years for forcible oral sex three years for possession of a controlled substance with intent to sell i mean it isn't as if and by the way between 1990 and 1997 he was re-imprisoned at least five times for parole violations, according to corrections records. And in 1998, he was convicted of having sex with a minor. <laughs> he went back to jail, got paroled again in 2002, and then he escaped. That's right. To become a professional protester. And the Society of Native Nations said, we're looking for somebody for the board. <laughs> Do you want to join? They got no problem. They have no problem with it. Let me show you. Okay. Uh, you think that they didn't know Evan Duke had a criminal record too? That mm -hmm. as recently as 2015, he was convicted again? Of course they know. They just don't care. 
Who else is chiming in about this Portland uh, protest? Why it was Chase Ironize, and what did he have to say? How a uh, he's speaking Lakota. I can't yeah, read it. Yeah, no, just read the, just read the English part, honey. <laughs> Violence is not the monopoly of the exploiters. As such, the exploited can use it too, and that is what more ought to use it when the movement arrives. And what is the the uh, poster itself it's, of? It's Che. Che Guevara. And at the bottom it says, "Words of comrades." Comrades, communists. Okay. And mm-hmm. what did this say at the top in the red words? Did you read the the post itself? Could you please? Yes. I did. Oh, you read. That was the the moment. The moment arrives. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Chase says, stand in priests and prayer. But, you know, that devolves quickly into, you know, something else. What's the next post that he says that he makes, Duke? Squash the fash. Now, no, smash. Smash it the says fash. Smash. smash the fash. And what is that a poster of? Uh, we beat them before. We'll beat them again, and it has a guy that looks like it's a mega hat on, and, well, a, and a Nazi behind him. And behind him is a Nazi, right? So mm-hmm. that's what it, rever- it says, we beat him before. And then it has a person wearing a mega hat, and it says, we'll beat him again. And the person uh, in front of, well, basically, there's a bayonet pointed at the mega hat wearer. Mm-hmm. That is the message from Chase Iron Eyes, who ran for Congress for the state of North Dakota. Exactly. Also convicted mm-hmm. of a weapons charge, right? Mm-hmm. And he was rearrested at Standing Rock, yep. as was Evan Duke. Next, he posts, so much for the peace and prayer, huh? Yeah, really. That went out the window fast. The Guardian article was posted by Chase Iron Eyes with the title, Portland Prepares for the City's Largest Far-Right Rally of the Trump Era. Huh. And he writes, you want to re- read the words there, honey? Portland prepares for cities. I already read that part. What did Smash Chase racist I- fascism in all forms. Exactly. So now he's talking about smashing, whereas before he wasn't talking about smashing. But of course, he knows Evan Duke. Here's a picture of them that goes back to the iron, uh, the... Uh, you know, Standing Rock after aftermath, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, he's got that stupid scarf on right mm-hmm. there. Same mm-hmm. scarf, guys. Same scarf. When I talk about the scarf, it's because I've seen it. Seen it in every picture. Every single time. For years. And he, he, uh, they talk about the tribal collaboration with the Border Support Network. It's discussed. This was Joe Plouffe, one of the people that helped to set up the camps. What does it say? This is a memo. To the World Wide Web from Evan Duke from the Asylum Seekers Caravan Support Network page. Yep, it's for immediate release, Sunday, November 18th, 2018. From Evan Duke, uh, Asylum Seekers Caravan Support Network to the World Wide Web. Immediate direct action needed. Speaking on behalf of the Asylum Seekers Caravan Support Network, Evan Duke this evening issued the following call. Rapidly deteriorating conditions along the American-Mexican border call for examples of unification. Let's jump, let's jump ahead to the second paragraph because this is the part that's really important All right. um, for you to recognize. It's in writing that they are collaborating. It says indigenous people. Along the border included the Asylum Seekers Caravan Support Network for a thoughtful and reasoned approach to real human drama. Speaking of the necessary peaceful action... Duke indicated one such voice of reason, Juan B. Mancias of the Carrizo Comacrudo tribe of Texas, expressed a need to travel to the convergence in Tijuana representing his people. The Carrizo Comacrudo, the convergence, is currently gathering at the U.S. border with Tijuana, Mexico. There he will participate in defining, promoting, and working for solutions based on true human need and responsibility. Mm-hmm. So he says that the Asylum Seekers Caravan Support Network, the Veterans Respond from Standing Rock and the Carrizo Come Crudo tribe will all work together. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that involves people like Lily Sinclair that we also saw in Portland. We also saw her in Portland as a street medic and activist. Yeah. They traveled together from Tijuana 
now they're at this thing in Portland. And this is a recent post she made. I'm not going to play the video that goes along with it. This is just a screen capture of her post in which she talks about um, being in Portland recently. She says, hey, y'all, uh, I'm going to do a live for a bit and just interact with people if anyone hopes, hops on the feed and also answer questions about me, my life, my activism work. So I'm tired and I've been thinking a lot about the journey I've been on in the last six years and especially within the last year. Folks who've known me that long often point out that I am complete, a completely different person than what they met when, the, than when they met me. I'm think, in thinking about that, I've started mentally cataloging the wild ride I've had of experiences within that time, college coming out, personal trauma, mental illness, monogamous engagement, starting sex work, Occupy Ice PDX, Charlottesville <clears throat> 2.0, Portland, Portland Living, Tijuana, Learning from Indigenous Elders, so much more. It's been a lot. So if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to ask. Well, I mean, I did listen to some of it before the show, and I just have to tell you guys, it was it was stunning. It was stunning to hear this woman talk about sex work, and in almost, well, more than a quarter, almost half of the video is just about her, um, her, what she called full service sex work, huh. which she clarified is the new and more modern way of saying prostitution. I guess. Which she's a very open about that she is a prostitute. And, um, but not to be mistaken with trafficking, sex trafficking uh, of people, okay? Because she uh, has no room for that. That It's not something she gets involved with. She just works alongside the people that do the smuggling and the sex trafficking. Because you know that she does. You know that she works alongside the people in Al Otro Lado, in Pueblos Sin Fronteras, we know have been accused of smuggling and trafficking people. We know she was in the WhatsApp chat talking about the rights of the, uh, the activists, including herself, to give drugs, to use drugs in Mexico and share them with the immigrants, including unaccompanied minor Carlos, who she slept with in her car. An unaccompanied minor. This is a picture of her resume. I just wanted to show you. I know it doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm talking about, but I wanted to remind you uh, how close these folks are. You know, there's Lolly B, one of the at the bottom, giving her love, props for her for um, her uh, cute cute new resume with little circles rating her capacity in different areas. Um, I guess, you know, full service sex work is not on yeah. there. <laughs> I, she left it off of the thing. Probably anyway. I mean, the second page. Maybe, maybe. Um, well, it says skills there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Lolly B, one of the people uh, volunteering for Al Otro Lado, giving false information to the migrants, still supporting giving much love to Lilith and Akichida Hoxida also hmm. right at the top there who is Manape Lemaire. Now Manape Lemaire was one of the quote unquote headsmen out at Standing Rock that made the decision that they would frame the innocent woman Kathleen Bennett. But he's also a convicted felon who was the strong arm in a gang of people selling meth from Iowa. His real name is George Lemaire, and he is the adopted son of the head of the Nebraska DNC. Yep. And of course, um, he is uh, supported and promoted by people involved with Bold Nebraska and Bold Iowa, Jane Klebe. They have no problem working with these former felons and dangerous people. 
even though those people continue to and go on to commit other crimes and hurt other people. Here is one of the people that uh, Evan was with. I showed you a little bit more on him. I just wanted to um, remind you folks that they didn't just meet at the Portland riot. Jamal Oscar X has been friends and a propagandist along with Evan Duke. That's uh, here re, re um, sharing Lily Sinclair's post in the Border Support Network uh, about the tear gas being used by Border Patrol at the clash that occurred in November mm -hmm. of last year of 2018. And he says, all because white people hate anyone who at white, short, what? White shoring at kids. We and women, um, uh, I don't know, what's the wordplay here? No, he doesn't know how to speak English. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just okay. going to skip whatever. That <clears throat> is. All right. But, you know, you get the point, right? You, he's, he's talking some smack there. And um, Jamal Oscar X is also pictured here with a group of Antifa gun club members. Ah. These are folks that don't mind using and, and, and talking about uh, the use of, of violence and use of weapons. Here is a post about the Portland riot in which uh, they talk about, um, Evan is talking about the use of a hammer. He also said there was a knife that was used at the Portland riot. Okay. And <clears throat> um, remember that video of Wania Locke I showed you on my last show uh, talking about how they were going to, you know, Allison Renville was uh, introducing Bernie Sanders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Remember playing a little bit of that? Mm -hmm. Show them show them the video. Show them the video so she, they can hear yeah, a just, little bit of it. Yeah, we just played that the other day, I think, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, and, and it was, she starts off by just, uh, you know, sitting there and then she turns the camera on um, the podium oh, and yeah. it's Allison Renville. Mm -hmm. Here's a little clip just to remind folks. There's a crowd on stage and a person's taking the podium. Allison Renville is taking the podium. Um, uh, my name is Allison Renville. I am a citizen and walked in Oyate, tribal member from Assistant South Dakota. I'm also Hunkrapa Lakota and Eagle Clan from the Omaha Nation. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, in a time when we have really put action behind a lot of the prayers that we've established over the last four years, Bernie Sanders has become part of that prayer for me. I have been able to give him Sweetgrass, I've given him sage, and today I plan to give him some cedar to make sure that the words that are spoken today. So I wanted to uh, remind folks or educate folks about what and who Allison Renville is. Now, when the Kathleen Bennett case uh, came about, Kathleen Bennett would have gone to jail. Mm -hmm. They would have railroaded her and killed her mother, and no one would have been any wiser. And... Mulaney Stoneman, the kidnapper, Bill Running Fisher, the mercenary, and their band of, uh, you know, frauds and liars involved would have all had a story about how they saved an elderly woman from her daughter, from her monstrous, abusive daughter, rather than being the monsters of the story themselves. Had it not been for two brave souls, two witnesses who doggedly defended that they knew that this was a frame job and that they could prove it. They worked tirelessly with us for years. Mm -hmm. Josh Long, Ren Brown. Yep. To free this woman. When they started speaking out and saying, we were with this woman and her mom. She did not abuse her mother. We were with them at the time they, that, that, they, uh, that they are accused of, of leaving their mom inside of a tent, frozen, naked, and covered in excrement and urine. They were not 
in the camp anymore. They were at the casino together. And there should be a way of, of, of finding proof that that is the case. And we did find proof of that. Oh, yeah. However, <coughs> uh, Alice and Renville, when they started talking about the fact that the story was a lie, that the article was false, the articles jailing her and accusing her of elder abuse was false, Alice and Renville that you saw on the podium introducing Bernie Sanders told these witnesses, tampered with these witnesses to silence them, to tell them to shut up and not talk out of turn because the Indians are discussing this still and to tell them that they were wrong. Look at the post. I want to remember with you. This is Allison Renville communicating with Josh Long and Wren. And she said, don't talk about that attack. We need to talk before you get the story twisted. So we have you on the right page, please. How do you get someone on the right page that was a witness mm -hmm. that knows that the whole thing was a farce? She goes on, we know the facts of the story. How the hell do you know the facts of the story when you weren't there, Allison? Because you were part of the criminal gang that decided to frame an innocent woman. How can these people even show their faces in public? That's right. It's disgusting to me. Mm -hmm. She says, it shouldn't be talked about yet. This woman contributed to the early death of an elderly woman. And she has the nerve to say, this, couldn't, this can't be talked about yet. All of these people were waiting for that poor elderly woman, Mary Trujillo, to just die and for her daughter to rot in a jail with no one to care for her. That's what they expected to happen. Mm -hmm. And could you finish reading what it says there? Yeah, we know the facts of the story. It shouldn't be talked about yet. There's truths in that article. I hope you decide not to add fuel to the fire before the horn can comment. The, the horn, horn was the group of, of um, you know, the... The uh, the headsmen. The headsmen that included that Akichita Hoxita that yeah. I just showed, whose real name is George uh, Lemaire. Yeah. Or Menape Lemaire. His Menape. dad is George Lemaire. Yep, exactly. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, here's a picture of Mr. Evan K. Duke with Allison Renville from After Standing Rock back in the day. And there's many more people involved here. One moment. Yes. I'm in the wrong spot. I have to look for it. For some reason, it's not there. It didn't come up. So oh. just, just cover cover for me. Okay. And, uh, well, um, it includes, this photo includes uh, a number of people, including the... Um, Oh, here it is. They're they're in front. They're actually in front of some kind of um, theater. It looks like, and um, it, down in front on their on their on one knee are Jesse Ilnicki and Ed Higgins. Behind them are Evan Duke. Then there's a guy that I don't know. I don't know who his name is. I don't know who his name. And then next to that guy is Allison Renville. Did you find it? Nope, I don't get keep, it. Keep scrolling. Sorry. It's it's in the thing. It's right there. Evan Lee at the very bottom, bottom row, right, 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 right there. Oh. That's it. Yes, the one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boy, sorry, folks. It's quite all right. Boom. Got it. Finally. Okay. So Evan is on... Uh, in the in the big in the front is Jesse L. Nicky. He came with the veteran stand for Standing Rock. Um, next to him is Ed Higgins. Uh, very few people came off as unhinged and as, um, you know, drug-addled or crazy as Jesse L. Nicky. Very few. Hmm. But a lot of these people were very unstable and addicted and. Yeah, many of those um, that were at Standing Rock had those problems. Yeah, there's Evan Duke in the back. Allison Renville has got her are, are her <coughs> hand on Jesse L. Nicky's shoulder, okay. and next to her is Lee Camp of oh. Redacted Tonight. Yeah, 
Then there is a woman who I am unsure about. Um, and uh, after her is the actress Maya Rose Burko. Hmm. Remember her? She was at Standing Rock. She um, she is friends with Madeline Kelly Merritt of uh, the okay. actress of Activate Now. Okay? So they knew each other. Here's another one of Evan Duke with Lee Camp, lest you think that that was just a one-off of a fan. He's wearing different clothes at a different event. These folks bu- bumped into each other many, many times. So did Evan Duke and Allison Renville. Here's another picture of them. And the um, the thing that really struck me after all of the Portland videos came out and I saw Evan Duke punching mm-hmm. people <coughs> and committing crimes was, seriously, does nobody... Is nobody figuring this out and what he's been accused of back then and ever since? Yeah, exactly. And apparently somebody was because uh, I found this po- uh, tweet that was uh, shared on social media by Milo Yiannopoulos that says, um, Tulsi Gabbard is an Antifa fangirl. Here she is with Evan Duke, a violent fascist activist who is under investigation for the attempted black market purchase of weapons from Mexico in order to stage an insurgency against the U.S. government. Gabbard describes Duke as incredible and that she was honored to meet him. Not just that, Milo Yiannopoulos, Mm -hmm. not just that. In addition to that, Evan Duke, Ed Higgins, and this group of different activists, including Jesse L. Nicky, which you see down there again on his knees, um, were the security detail for Tulsi Gabbard. Mm-hmm. When she at, was Standing Rock. Yes. When she was at Standing Rock. Mm-hmm. They were the security detail for a member of Congress. She had Antifa guarding. Yeah. <laughs> My God, this woman. Yep, she did. And, you know... Um, you'll remember that the person that he was accused of getting together with by, you know, the investigation of the FBI involves a man named Ivan Riebling, who you may recall is this man. This is the guy here pictured taking a very chummy picture with Paloma for fraud. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paloma for Trump. And... In this article by PJ Media, they break down exactly what is known about this investigation of the armed rebellion and the Antifa plot. Ongoing investigation. Um, And this was from the San Diego Union Tribune uh, unclassified report. As you recall, Wendy Fry Mm -hmm. quoted Evan Duke as saying, that she, he believed that the investigation against him was taking place because of yours truly a Mexican crossing lines. Do you remember that? Yeah. You, all, you guys recall <laughs> that? I shared this article before. Mm-hmm. I've told you this is what he said about me. In fact, this article quotes our station's reporting and talks about the goals of the group that Evan belongs to and how they operate as chaos agents. Yep. Evan came to Standing Rock with a veteran stand for Standing Rock, which later changed their name to Veterans Respond and later mor- morphed into the Service Corps. But here they are, the ragtag team. At Standing Rock. With the, la- the, the elderly lady, Regina, that was mm-hmm. at Wounded Knee. Remember? Yep. Um, and this was in the last days of the camp, right before <coughs> they shut it down. Mm-hmm. Here is, uh, a picture of him from his youth in which he claims that he served in the National Guard. Oh. You can see there in the comments that he mentions at the very bottom. He was, it was the only way he could afford college. Wow. And... 
I don't know what his service consisted of, but there were a lot of people that went to Standing Rock that called themselves veterans. Ed Higgins was one of them, and then he later admitted after talking about being a sharpshooter yes. uh, in some article that sounded like a bunch of bunk, he admitted that he was actually kicked out of, <laughs> of the um, basic, basic training. training because he came back and tested positive for cocaine. Mm. And you guys remember uh, his involvement with Wes Clark. Here he is. Oh, go back to the one you're about to show there. Yes. Now, Evan Duke, who, like many of the other veterans that we saw there that are joined with these rebellious Antifa-connected groups, can you know show their pictures of their service or talk about or embellish on their service when in fact they do not believe in our democracy or our government? What did he post here, Duke? Evan K. Duke the Third says America in quotes has several types of governments in place. The United States is not a democracy, nor has it ever been. Exactly, and he, you know Wes Clark uh, was. Uh, also pictured with him and his scarf in this <laughs> picture you see him hanging out because of course they were together remember he was the security detail mm -hmm. for Tulsi, Tulsi. Yeah. and of course here is a picture of Wes and Tulsi and next to them is Phyllis Young Phyllis Young uh, was one of the ladies in leadership she was assigned by the tribal chairman to be the liaison for the pipeline construction mm -hmm. project. <clears throat> Evan also, also got close to Tulsi. Here he is in a selfie he did with her. It wasn't that he was just in the sidelines, but there was a lot of people that were allowed to get very close to her, including Higgins. Um... Dave Archambel, the tribal chairman that's pictured next to her in front. And behind uh, Archambel, you can see Evan Duke. That, oh, yeah. That was him in the just previous picture in the same clothes. Mm -hmm. And in this article from HuffPo, you can see that this picture was the one that they used oh, okay. in the article. Yep. Where they, she talks about, you know, that's where she was quoted saying nice things about the people she was taking pictures with. Uh -huh. <coughs> Here is a picture of Tulsi with Dave Archambel and the veteran stand for Standing Rock spokesperson, L'Oreal Blackshaw. Oh, boy. Who put together the security team that had the mercenary, Bill Running Fisher, that kidnapped, that helped to kidnap Mary Trujillo and put her in a hospital and in an early grave. This is the person, the spokesperson, whispering in the chairman's ear that gave the power to the security team that conducted raids in the, in the uh, camp encampment and that um, put the, the life of this elderly woman at risk and put her in an early grave and framed a completely innocent woman. Tulsi wasn't just hanging out with indigenous celebs and dignitaries. She was also hanging out with the stars. In this uh, picture from her Tulsi Run Tulsi Run Facebook page, she is uh, with, uh, you, you, you started the next one, honey. That one. No. That's not the right one. Nope. Uh, no, we need the Tulsi Dave Archambault L'Oreal. Uh, mm. That's it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, that's the one that we just saw. You're right. That there's a there's one from her there's one from her Facebook page, um, that, that comes up in a little bit. I jumped ahead. My bad. Okay. Uh, I wanted to show you the uh one of the people, um, that. Tulsi is very close to um, Winnie Wong. As you see here, she is pictured with her. And 
Winnie posts this on her Facebook page saying, I wouldn't mess with us, would you? And of course, as you know, Winnie Wong serves as a political advisor to Bernie Sanders. Exactly. In this other picture of seven McDonald's post uh, of going to Standing Rock, she features many actors. I don't know all their names uh, except for Danny DeVito. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's Tulsi featured right? Mm -hmm. um, in this other post uh, from the Veterans Respond, you see that the Bernie's Brigade was at Standing Rock to support the Veterans Respond. Can you scroll down to the bottom of that? Okay. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, and then... Um, the Strong Hearts, of course, as you know, is the uh, society that Mulaney was in and Faith Spotted Eagle was in. Okay. Strong Hearts. Uh, Winona LaDuke is also friends with Evan K. Duke the third. Winona LaDuke, of course, most recently has been accused, uh, is being sued for allowing a uh, person that sexually harassed employees and is accused, uh, has several credible accusations of diddling with children and that she gave um, continued protection to as a spiritual leader, as you know, was pictured here with Evan K. Duke when back from the camp days because he was close to all of, uh, all of the leadership out there. Here's a picture with Tulsi, Myron, Myron Dewey, who's married to Deborah Parker of Our Revolution. Deborah Parker that did the Democratic platform. Tina Pugliese of Women Indigenous Media. And I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> oh, I guess that's her husband. The dude in the in the beard is her Tulsi Gabbard's husband. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, next I have Tulsi. <laughs> Tulsi's uh, from her page. Here she is with Dave Archambault. This is from her Tulsi Run, Run Tulsi Run Facebook page. Could you read that one for me, honey? Yeah, yesterday we met with the chairman of the Standing Rock Tribe, Dave Archambault, the second, and council member Cody <laughs> Two Bears. We sat for a couple of hours and learned about the history of the tribe and the current mission we are on. It was an amazing, deeply moving experience. I feel honored and blessed to be part of what will be a turning point for these amazing people here and around the world. Aloha. Tulsi was uh, in D.C. with uh, Ed Higgins as well. Here she is, smiling big for Activate Now, and then a hug in the picture below, and her husband is there doing uh, camera work. You can see him there in the in the hat I am. Uh, with the blue, blue hat on. So they get a big hug. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you can see that they are um, taking a picture together. There's Evan Duke all the way in the back, many of the same figures, Jesse Elnicki in the front. Mm -hmm. You've got Ed Higgins again. You've got some of the other veterans from the Veterans Respond Group all the way in the back with Duke. And this is for the DC inauguration mission. I guess. Okay? Now, you've got Evan Duke in our resistance. This started... You know, the, the page that I keep showing you, they talk about border support network stuff and started at Standing Rock. Here's the post from 2016 in which you see them uh, featuring Michael Marcus and many of the other veterans mm -hmm. people came to know as heroes later on. Uh, and at the very bottom, you see this comes from our resistance. Yep. It says veterans hold a vigil on the bridge with Wes Clark, Phyllis Young. And they speak with National Guard commander. Hmm. Can you go down any further or nope, is that that's all it goes? That's okay. It. So this is from our resistance. And then, of course, um, he was involved with Jill Stein's campaign. Here he is. Um, oh, i sorry. I skipped this. The ino I, Occupy inauguration was one of his first missives. You can see, and I've showed you this before, but for those of you who are new to my show, you can see that he had, they list all of the different organizations mm -hmm. that he is working with. <coughs> this is the, the, the Antifa 
uh, person that you saw in Portland punching the people on the bus, punching, what was it, the American Guard people yeah. that were on the bus? You've got all of these different organizations, including Occupy Wall Street, Code Pink, uh, Progressive Independent Party, um, Real Progressives, Bernie's National Delegate Speaking Panel, Veterans for Peace. So it's, it's um, a very uh, interesting list of folks, but you've got Dave Cobb there, Tim Canova, Winona LaDuke, mm -hmm. right? So, of course... Um, they're not just joining in an effort. These people work together. Here is Evan Duke with Jill Stein. Or I, sk I skipped ahead. This oh, is no. Craig, Craig Cobb interviewing uh, Evan Duke. I see. On the Real Progressives, uh, the, the uh, campaign page, Stein and Baraka for 2016. Mm -hmm. And here is Evan Duke with Jill Stein. And they're not just in one picture. There's actually a couple of them here. She's sitting in his lap. Huh. And she has her arm around him. Yeah. They got a little chummier. And then, of course, you know, uh, Josh Fox is a documentary filmmaker that was at Standing Rock. And here's Duke hanging out with him. He was one mm -hmm. of the people that helped Myron Dewey make that horrible documentary featuring the oh, kidnapper yeah. Mulaney Stoneman. Exactly. Here is a co-rapist of Carly Hammond, Chelsea Lyons-Kent of Truth Against the Machine with Jordan Sheridan, but also one of the correspondents working closely with the Young Turks. And there's also the uh, media ally, Jonathan Klett, who was uh, Maggie Day's little boyfriend. Uh, yes. And of course we have Another picture with Myron Dewey and Evan Duke, who have been working on the Border Support Network mm -hmm. in Mexico and at the border camps ever since the, con the, the caravans began. Yep. But don't forget that these are the same folks that brought you, you know, this, this veteran. Supposedly he's a veteran. I don't know uh, about the credentials on, on Evan Duke. But... Um, the, these are the people that brought you the Nathan, Nathan Phillips hoax. Mm -hmm. The Nathan Phillips hoax that took place with uh, Kingfisher. That picture that you just showed has the guy in the brown jacket is Ray Kingfisher. He was one of the people with Nathan Phillips. That's right. Yeah. That was interviewing him. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, practically holding his hand. Mm -hmm. They traveled there together. They work together. They go from place to place together putting on these hoaxes. Here's Evan in another picture with Ev Myron Dewey and his scarf. And his scarf. His favorite scarves. Mm -hmm. uh, here is Steve Grunbein of Real Progressives. They were all working with Ed Higgins at first, and then he went on to a different platform. And when the uh, Abolish Ice page was started, you can see here that the person who started Occupy Ice – Okay, is mm -hmm. Evan K. Duke the third? It's his page. And who established the Border Support Network? The Border Support Network was established by, scroll down there so we can see who it was established by. It says it was the group is created by Occupy Ice. Well, who is Occupy Ice? Mm -hmm. We just saw it's Evan K. Duke the third. That's who it is. And let's not forget more recently, he was praising Will von Sp Willem von Spronson, the guy that blew up vehicles and attempted to blow up a propane tank next to an ice facility in mm -hmm. Tacoma, Washington, saying rest in power, calling this guy a hashtag hero. Wow. Uh, let's not forget that he was the guy that helped to establish the activist camps Mm -hmm. Down in Texas, where they were going to have, uh, you know, trainings and actions, yep. right? Yep. They Let's not forget, he is also part of the DHS CBP investigation. Department of Homeland Security has created a list of people that include, al otro lado, lawyers, that includes these Antifa leaders, that includes people. And what are they being investigated for? Human smuggling. 
And who does Evan Duke work with even right now at the border? Well, it's Luis Gutierrez. Or should I say Luis Monsivice, mm -hmm. as he likes to go by. In this post, you can see that Evan says, one of our allies at the border giving us a report. What was Lewis <laughs> reporting on at the time? What does it say he was reporting on? Why Kelsey Warren's house and town Lajitas are one of the easiest places to cross mm -hmm. the Rio Grande from Mexico into the United States. Why is he telling people about where to cross the river. Well, I'll let him tell you for himself. Yeah, really. He's a human trafficker, and he's proud to tell you he is uh, helping at the uh, border with Evan Duke. Here are his, his own words. If we can get somebody on here. Just going to talk about uh, a little bit of everything this morning. I really never know when I'm going to do a live feed. I'd always just feel to do one every once in a while. Oh, good. Hey, good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. I got a couple people coming on. Like I say, um, I'm going to continue to make my, my way down the Rio Grande River. Uh, I'm traveling right now just to kind of bring people up to par. I figured I'd do a live feed right now because I'm posted up at some uh, people's property. They're so gracious to uh, open up their property to me. And uh, it's been a fantastic uh, day and a half or so here uh, going using their property as a home base. It's a safe spot. <clears throat> and uh, they have Wi-Fi so they allow me to piggyback off of them which is really great and I kind of want to give people an update on where I'm going to be going and what I'm going to be doing as much as I possibly can because where I'm going is no Wi-Fi and uh, no service and I want to make sure people understand about where I'm at and what my intentions are. What I want to try to continue to do since I'm in this region and I'm uh, I guess at the hands of uh, life in general I'm going to make the best I possibly can out of the situation and do as much research as I can here along the border. I think it's an important issue because we have uh, so much separation amongst the American people and amongst the people about a border wall, about migrants and asylum seekers, about uh, border crossings. Uh, we have uh, human traffickers that people are, are interested in. And these are some of the topics that I want to talk about. Because I think it's important that uh, people get another narrative of what's the truth out here. As I continue to talk to people, individual people, or interview individual people, uh, they tell me a lot of what I suspect. That regardless the beauty of this area and the sanctuaries in this area and the parks in this region and the waterways and the people that make the money and the, uh, through the Rio Grande, there will be no border wall, they say, in this area. There have been small cities like Trilingua, who has passed ordinance for a no-wall ordinance. Uh, there have been uh, places like, as we know, we have visited the last several days, Kelsey Warren's town called Lajitas. And the employees and people there told me specifically that he has pushed um, for uh, a no-wall through his area also as well. So... I think it's important time of our lives to be able to have somebody out here at least trying to show and document and drone video footage and interview and see for ourselves what's really going on in these regions and what's the possibilities um, because we have a lot of fear involved with our news outlets. Uh, with uh, your president, uh, with the people, with bigotry, with racism, uh, with uh, human rights violation on such a mass scale that it's 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 seeming like you're you're having um, a wildfire of hate or a wildfire of bigotry, a wildfire of fear. Let's call it.
service or Wi-Fi service. I will be without Wi-Fi service and phone service for the next couple of days. Uh, I'm going to head into a region where it's very known, well-known crossings areas on both sides of the Rio Grande. Uh, on the Mexican side and the with the south side border and the north side of the border uh, being Texas. I think it's very important to uh, document these areas either specifically for myself or for a database, a mental database, or just the knowledge of knowing where these are at. So I get to, I get to work with a lot of very old friends and um, old families. I get to meet new friends and new families that are always interested in this type of work. Uh, I would ask people to try to understand uh, this in a bigger scale. Everybody always says, I got a message this morning uh, from a young lady that said, I like your videos, I understand about the border crossings, I'm with you, but what about the drugs? What about the child trafficking? What about the human trafficking? Now, it is well known uh, to my family and to myself that uh, I worked this field for several years and was very successful in this field and um, well I also paid my debt to society I was also caught with this fear of human trafficking human trafficking and let me say something I've also had sent some some people have sent me personal messages that were sent a year ago or months ago about me that people that are still on my friends list and you know who you are there's a group of guys men that uh, and one in one in particular that I have the snapshot of their message saying that I would never talk to him that I remember when he was in or I'd never associate with him because I remember when he was in Presidio fighting against the Trans Pecos pipeline he had mentioned that he was a he worked in that field and I would never work with anybody or respect anybody who took advantage of those people and I want to speak to you and to other people who have fears that this isn't what the news outlets have allowed you to understand this isn't uh, uh, human trafficking there is two or three different ways of human trafficking uh, and the way that we went about it we were a family-run industry we took damn good care of every individual that came with us in every route and every direction and we have all those people that will vouch and will pull for us and for myself. we were bringing in people that um, were asylum seekers were also uh, people that wanted to get here on all scales there was no none we would have been shut down by our bosses and our leaders uh, in a heartbeat if there is any any wrongdoing to any of our family members that we were helping it is a business yes it is a money ran business where one particular person or persons or group provided a service to be able to transport individual people that were pick and chosen by families to come towards these companies say so to speak because we were good at what we did we were fair about what we did we helped our people and this is one of the things that I haven't talked about to many people I will always be proud of what I've done I will always take it with honor of the people that I helped I will always take that to the other side knowing that I did my part uh, to help this man just told you that people came up to him and said they didn't want to associate with him because they found out going all the way back to the Trans Pecos pipeline that he was a human smuggler that he was trafficking people and he said I do it right my criming is good criming I'm good at the criming it's a money-making business and I'm really good at it. I got caught. I, I paid my debt to society. You know why? You know why, folks? Because he was the other person at the Trans-Pecos pipeline with that 
Pete Heflin, a.k.a. Gutierrez Regabo Pedro that I just showed you at the top of the show wearing the same AIM shirt with like Evan Duke, very similar anyway. And this article you can see called The Secret Life of a Hollywood Pipeline Protester back from 2017, folks. This is hmm. after Standing Rock has started, right? Yep. So going all the way back to then, it's if you scroll down, you will see the name of Mr. Uh, Pedro Regabo Gutierrez, which we talked about earlier. But you will also see the name uh, in this article of Mr. Louis Monsivais. West Texas is a familiar is familiar with anti pipeline protest leaders with extensive criminal histories. Earlier this year, Pedro Regabo Gutierrez and Luis Monsivais Gutierrez joined together at a protest while both kept their criminal pasts hidden. You saw the Society of Native Nations that works to, in hand in hand, hand in glove with Luis Monsivais. You heard this man who was posted up by Evan K. Duke as an ally working at the border with them, right? They all are well aware. He talks about his criminal history in the video. They know these people are criminals and they don't care. It's not that they, oops, forgot to check their criminal background. They choose them. I I, I would I would assert they choose them because they're criminals. They choose them because they're out of control, because they're willing to do anything, because they're unhinged, out of control. That's why they choose them. In fact, Louis Monsivais is a stunt double. Mm -hmm. By the way, folks, I have an announcement to make. We're going to be doing our very first super chat on YouTube right after this. I invite all of you to go there. I'm sharing the link to the super chat on YouTube in the comments of the show. It's going to be an opportunity, a rare opportunity, since we don't frequently do this, to simply do Q&A. We are willing to answer your questions on super chat. And um, I'm having Nemo share that link to you guys. So follow us. On YouTube, here's the link for all of you to go and check out our Super Chat right after the show. I hope you'll join us, especially if you've got questions about this or any other topic related to us. Duke and I are going to be doing that in just a moment. Finally, I want to show to you that Evan Duke has previously slipped through the fingers of Border Patrol. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol chained him to a bench, drew down on him according to Evan himself, they uh, had long arms and um, weapons. I mean, you know, a, you know, like long weapons, automatic weapons, long mm -hmm. weapons. They interrogated him, him and the group he was with for hours. They seized his telephone. And of course, he ha is on that list. So we know that Evan and many of the other people Evan and these folks work with are admitted criminals and human traffickers and smugglers, sex workers, people that have no qualms with working with other criminals or people that um, provide drugs to the, the caravan or kidnap unaccompanied minors. It's, it's, a, it's an unscrupulous world that these people come from. And this particular agent of chaos has connections to people in politics and power, including Tulsi Gabbard, Jill Stein, and others I've shown you on my show in the media. I have a lot of questions about that. I think many of you should be asking those questions of these political figures and media people because seriously, what the heck is going on? How does this guy avoid going to jail? How does he continue to operate? And why are they choosing all of these criminals to work with? All questions I'm sure we all share in common. But that's all I have for you now. We are running over to YouTube. Follow us over there and we will be open for Q&A right now yeah, in Super Chat. We're going to do a five minute clock and then we'll join, join us and go to the page. Yes, join us. Here's the link for everyone.
Uh, you can go to Duke1517 and on YouTube. That's our channel. Please uh, subscribe and press the button for notifications so you can find out. Since we can now do Super Chats, we will be trying to do this more often. Catch you on YouTube. Thanks for being here on a Mexican Crossing Lines with your host, Cindy Gomez Shemp. And Duke Gomez Shemp. You've been listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Good night and catch you on YouTube.